Retirement. For many of us, it's a phase of life we've dreamed about since we started working. It's a time of new freedom, a chance to reclaim some of that leisure time that for years gave way to the responsibilities of work and family. Hi, I'm Jerry Basco. Just a few years ago, I retired from a 45-year career. I was used to early mornings and tight schedules. I must admit that at first, the change was quite a shock, but I adjusted as we all do, and as you will too. The key to putting your mind at ease is to take a look at some of the issues that are sure to play out in the next little while. You might be concerned about what the future holds, or be nervous about your changing relationships and how to make the most of them. You might worry about your physical or financial health, or be planning a move to a new home. All of these are topics we'll touch on in the next little while. This time in our lives brings a lot of changes. It's a big adjustment, and that's where the Bridging the Gap Retirement Program comes in. Developed by retired men and women like you and me, this video, the companion set of workbooks, and in many cases, the chance to get together for group discussion, can ease the adjustment process. If you're part of a Bridging the Gap seminar, icebreaker activities will open the doors of discussion with group members, helping you to get to know one another. We've got a quarter of our lives ahead and decades of wisdom behind us. We're smarter and more free than we've ever been. So let's find out how to make the most of this wonderful time. Did you know that more than two and a half million Canadians are approaching retirement age? Of these, at least half can expect to live another 20 years or more. 20 years. That makes your retirement choices as important as your career choices used to be. You plan for success in the workplace, and you'll want to do the same now. Some call this stage a second adulthood. Without a doubt, it can be a time of new experiences and tremendous personal growth. I really was concerned about not having any structure. The first two weeks were great. After that, I felt like my life was just directionless. Um, but there is definitely a danger of taking on too much. So um, I, I picked a couple of things, and uh, and your, car your, your calendar fill, fills up very, very quickly. You know, it's amazing how fast you can get caught up in the same thing again. But you have to become a little hard-nosed in saying no, mm -hmm. because as was mentioned, you can soon get overloaded, and before you know it, you've got no spare time. You're just activity after activity and commitment after commitment. Yes, you welcome. You welcome the routine because um, otherwise you get lazy. Gauging your satisfaction in retirement starts with getting a handle on your expectations. The first few days and months after the fact are easy for most of us. We can catch up on our sleep and visit with old friends. It feels like a vacation really, but then the day-to-day -day reality sets in. Some people get bored. Others look back with disappointment at the way their careers ended. To get out of the slump, you've got to take a hard look at what you want to get out of this next phase of your life. What will it be like? What do you hope to achieve? The exercise on page 6 will help you set short-term goals for, say, the next three years. Where do you want to be in that period of time? Traveling? Volunteering? Working in a home-based business? Jot down your answers, then take a close look at them. Are your ideas realistic? If so, what can you do to make them happen? What's one small step you can take right away to set those wheels in motion? I think one of the goals that I set was to make sure that we stay in contact with our, our grandchildren. And uh, we try very hard to, uh, to do that. With, uh, if we can't see them, we use the telephone. We, I go shopping with uh, our goal oldest granddaughter, and uh, it's a it's a great joy to um, actually me and to to my husband. When I retired, I, I had a couple of things in mind, uh, mostly in the area of hobbies. I'd never been involved in woodworking at all uh, while I was going to school or during my career, and it's one thing I really wanted to get involved in. And in addition to that, digital f photography is so important these days. And I always was interested in camera work, so I'm, I really want to spend more time with cameras. We have many goals to pursue, but also share some common concerns. 
We worry about our financial security and whether our standard of living will change. We worry about staying healthy long enough to meet the goals we've set. There's the matter of relationships and the impact that retirement will have on day-to-day -day life with our spouse, friends, and family. For those of us longing to replace the challenges and rewards of a working life, volunteering and leadership roles might fill the void. Making a contribution in whatever way you can is a surefire way to show yourself and others that you're vital and important. And though it's not a comfortable topic, you want to give some thought to your own mortality. How many years lie ahead for you, your spouse, and your friends? Getting your affairs in order will bring security. You'll know things will be handled the way you want them to be. If you're a woman reaching retirement age, you may have some unique concerns. Will you retire when your husband does? Or will you have to work longer to maintain your standard of living? If you're single, you'll want to make sure you're financially prepared for the change. If you're a homemaker, will having your husband home change your role or your environment? We did have a little problem right at the very beginning because he wanted to uh, change the cupboards, <laughs> all the dishes. And why don't you have this here? Why don't you have that there? But we worked that out very nicely. <laughs> Uh, yes, there is, uh, there is more sharing uh, in our home. Um, my husband loves to cook and uh, I certainly am very happy to share that with him. <laughs> Adjusting to the change was a challenge then and it will be now. But looking back at how we've dealt with changes in the past can be a helpful way to create coping mechanisms. Major changes for many of us have included moving to a new city, going back to school or starting a new job. We managed with the help of the resources around us, family and friends or community programs. Of course, inner resources are invaluable too. Your character traits, attitudes, skills and personal strengths have all played a role in helping you through adjustments in the past. Some people seem to make that transition into retirement so gracefully we can't help but wonder how. The shift into retirement requires people to face reality. And that means accepting life as it is and making the best of it, even compromising from time to time. We have to take responsibility for our own situation instead of playing the blame game. We can get help when we need it, but we also have to take charge of solving our own problems. It's important to stay involved. Don't withdraw from life or other people. Keep in touch with friends and get involved in activities where you can make new connections. Having a variety of interests keeps you involved and allows you to share your ideas and talents with others. Look forward instead of back. Living in the present and the future puts focus on the skills and goals yet to come, giving direction and purpose to our lives. And be proactive about your health rather than dwelling on your aches and pains. Take pride in your home and your personal appearance as much as you always have. It may seem trivial, but keeping up appearances keeps you ready to be involved. And some days, looking good can be a first step towards feeling better. Most of all, remember to relax and enjoy life. Don't take things too seriously. Taking pleasure in daily activities and counting our blessings can help us to enjoy life on a day-to-day -day basis, rather than carrying age as a burden. We all have resources that will support us in the years ahead. People, activities, services, and personal qualities will become sources of strength and satisfaction. They're different for each of us, but will prove invaluable as we plan for the years ahead. When I first retired, I thought I needed uh, some kind of a support system. And for me, um, my community center, the senior center, is a great one because I can volunteer there. There are lots of activities. They keep me moving. And uh, it's just a really happening place. I, I really like it. It is a golf group. I coordinate a group of 16 guys who play golf uh, every Monday. Hmm. And uh, one of the criteria for being part of our group is that you have a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I was involved in Rotary before, but since retirement, I got much more involved uh, in that area. Likewise, much more involvement through the church. Uh, I said I wasn't going to join a probus club until I left Rotary, but I still really enjoy aspects of Rotary, so I'm now on probus as well. Those are all uh, areas that give me a sense of satisfaction and contribution 
to life and uh, I'm happy I'm in those things. Your resources, the people, activities and services you can rely on are going to be an essential part of the support system that makes your emotional journey into retirement the best it can be. Now, most of us will find it easier when we take things one step at a time. And that means passing through a number of inevitable stages. There's the remote stage, which can begin many years before retirement occurs. It's when we start thinking about the changes ahead. Hopefully, we're planning for them, though at this point, it's easy to put things off. In the near stage, retirement is just a few years away, and denial is no longer an option. Most of us are taking concrete steps to prepare ourselves, both financially and emotionally. The retirement event can unleash a range of emotions. We're excited about our new freedom, but worried about missing both our co-workers and our paycheck. Then there's the honeymoon stage. You can sleep in, travel, and do all of the things you've been looking forward to. Initially, it's great, and ideally, this stage never ends. But when the novelty wears off, disenchantment can set in. If some of us find retirement isn't quite what we've imagined, we've entered the disenchanted stage. The timing of this stage can vary widely, coming days or years after the retirement event. But we have plenty of time ahead of us, which is why the reorientation stage is so important. At this point in the transition, we have the chance to build new interests and make our role in the community anything we want it to be. It's a time to test drive new activities and a new perspective. And that's when we reach a point of stability, enjoying satisfaction with our retirement lifestyle. The journey to stability is different for everyone, but wherever you are on the continuum, bridging the gap can help you with tools to build your own satisfying retirement. Often it's easy to forget the impact retirement will have on the important people in our lives, our spouse, children, and friends. These relationships can influence how much we enjoy retirement. Our lives may be changing, but our circle of support grounds us emotionally. It only makes sense to put effort into sustaining the relationships we have and even building new ones. As your lifestyle changes, your expectations are likely changing too. On the home front, you may now have unlimited time with your spouse after years of living busy, separate lives. You may face the responsibility of caring for grandchildren or elderly family members. If you set new goals for your retirement, you might be starting a home business or returning to school. For such changes to be realized, you'll need your spouse, family and friends to lend their support. The expectations you have of others and they of you may be outdated. After all, you've taken on a variety of roles in the past and look to enjoy new ones down the road. It's important to reflect on what you have to give to those around you and likewise, what you'll come to expect from others. You can, in a sense, recreate your role within your family and circle of friends, making sure the elements are in place to satisfy your own emotional needs. Um, 10 years ago, I, uh, I had uh, a business that, that I sold uh, I think the change was my uh, son had a uh, son and his wife had a son, and I felt I'd worked a lot and now wanted, never spent as much time with my kids as I would have liked. And now this other little guy came along, so that put me in a mode for wanting to change. Well, I think it makes a difference when you retire whether your spouse also retires or is retired, and mine is not. So basically, what happens is you have a little bit of a role reversal. In the, in the meantime, I had now a lot of time to spend on hobbies that I always wanted to do, but never had a chance to because you're too busy, right? So now suddenly that, that avenue opens up. Well, the, the past 10 years for me were, were, were difficult because I retired from the federal government uh, because my job was declared redundant. And the, the, we, the month after my, uh, my husband died, so uh, there was a double change there. And in the end, two years after that, then I moved here to, to Kitchener. And at Kitchener, I found the joy of volunteering. I've sort of turned it into a, a non-paying job because whatever I 
do now keeps me almost as busy as, as it did when, when I was working. The changes have been good. They have been difficult, but they've, they've been good and they've given me a lot of joy in the end. As your roles in life have changed, you've likely looked to certain loved ones as key sources of support. It's important that you continue to involve others, but essential you build on the relationships by also offering support to those you love. Will many of your relationships change in retirement? If you rely on your co-workers for support or if you're planning to move, some may change significantly. If you expect people will drop off the emotional landscape, Think about what you can do to fill those supportive roles in your life. I keep in contact, but my, my former colleagues are very far away because they're all still in Ottawa. I find that email is, is really a great thing, and once a year, usually in the fall, I, I take a pilgrimage back and we all get together for lunch. But we do stay in constant touch, and it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful thing to know that the friendships you made uh, during your working time are, are not cut off and lost when, when you leave the job. I retired from uh, education and, uh, and we have groups that meet on a regular basis for breakfast somewhere. And so, you know, there's an ongoing uh, opportunity to interact and to see how other people are doing. As our lifestyles change, so do many other things, including our marital relationships. If both you and your spouse have worked outside the home, you may not be used to spending a lot of time together. You'll have to work on planning a new lifestyle, one that involves more shared time and activities you can both enjoy. But the hardest transition of all can be adjusting to the loss of a spouse because of divorce or death. Contrary to popular belief, a sizable percentage of divorces take place in the 50 plus age group. If this is your situation, remember you're not alone. Support groups may be available in your area. It hardly needs to be said that the death of a spouse is a major adjustment, no matter when it occurs. Combined with the challenges of a recent retirement, a loss like this can create massive upheaval. If your spouse has passed away, seek out support where you can, from family, friends, or clergy. Counselors and support groups may also prove invaluable in helping you cope with the loss. Taking on a caregiving role for elderly relatives or children will surely create some major changes in your life. If you're up for the job, look into what resources are available to help you. Not-for-profit groups such as the Cancer or Alzheimer Societies often have support groups for caregivers. There's one more job that most of us are very willing to undertake, that of a more involved grandparent. With increased knowledge and more patience than we once had, we can often be more effective dealing with our grandkids than we were with our own children. I think uh, it's obvious that grandparents, if you're close, live close, uh, you can be a, an important role model in, in some cases. I've always been involved in sports and, um, and mainly soccer uh, and um, my, the, the eldest grandson that we have now is uh, 11 and then there's three others and they're all involved in sports and activities in some way. When it comes to soccer, I can be very involved. When it comes to dance, not so much. <laughs> but, you know, we support them in, in always being there. And I, I, I'd like to think that at the moment, um, because of our relationship, my wife as well, um, the kids actually look forward to coming to us. Yeah, I think uh, during the last 10 years of my transition, the most important thing is being a grandfather. I have seven grandkids and they all live within minutes of the house and uh, my wife still works full time so I get to spend a lot of time with the, the grandkids, show them around the games and picking them up and various things and uh, I don't quite frankly know what I would do without, without that. In this section we've taken a look at the ways we might expect relationships to change with our family and friends. In some cases we can build closeness in our relationships by stopping to really listen to one another. When you sit down to talk with those who matter most, think of conversation as an art. Take pride in your ability to express yourself and to understand another person. A good listener respects their conversation partner by not interrupting, not finishing sentences, and hardest to do, not jumping to conclusions. These techniques may require the breaking of a few old habits, but they're essential factors in learning to listen effectively.
For more helpful hints in learning to become a better listener, see page 13 of your workbook. The strongest relationships, like our marriages, rely on two-way communication. It's a habit that may have slipped over the years, but with a little effort, couples can perfect their communication skills. Now, as you spend more time together, allow a few minutes for quiet conversation. Deal with problems as they arise. Listen to the feelings behind your partner's words and validate them. Offer comfort when you can, and remember to keep your sense of humor. Respect your partner's advice. Ask for opinions, but don't resent honest criticism if it's shared calmly and with sensitivity. And most of all, Set goals and plan to use your communication skills. The years ahead are an opportunity to build friendships and support networks. These will turn your wisdom and experience into a gift you can share. I was widowed right after my retirement. I found when I came here that getting involved with the bereavement groups at Rockway was, was a great help to me. When I was widowed, there was very little that was available, and I, I saw that there was a need. And so even though each time I take a group through this terrible journey, I find some sort of peace and satisfaction in, in watching them make this transition and when they exit and they say, I can go on now, then that, for me, that, that's it. That's the, the best reward possible to, to watch these broken people go out and reconstruct their lives and learn to accept what's been given to them. It, it's, it's a real joy. I've taken on a sort of coordinator in helping with bridging the gap. and. Uh, Seeing the people, different people come and uh, experience how, how they have their fears of retirement, uh, seeing how the leaders deal with this and uh, help alleviate their fears and give them some su ideas for support, I think that's just a wonderful role to, to help with. Well, and, and you feel get a personal satisfaction out of seeing them say, you know, sort of leave and say thanks for the support, and you've given me some ideas for, for what I'm going to do in my retirement. It seems that people approaching retirement fall into one of two categories. There are those with a lengthy to-do list, and those wondering what will become of all the empty hours. Whatever camp you fall into, one thing is for sure. Your understanding of time itself is about to change. The demands of your job no longer control you. What a wonderful feeling that is. But on the flip side, it's now up to you to make wise use of your time. So, what are you going to do? There's certainly plenty to choose from. You might have plans to go back to school, work part-time, or start your own business. Others get involved in community organizations, lobby for causes, or sign up for volunteer work. Relaxing, after all, is great for a week or two, but in the long run, it's a surefire recipe for boredom. For most of us, adding structure and purpose to our weeks and months makes the transition from work to retirement a much more fulfilling one. When I retired, I was really looking forward to nothing to do. I needed that however long it took to just decompress and just wake up in the morning and have a free day. It was wonderful. When I first retired, I found that it was very distressing having so, so much time on my hands. I didn't know what to do with it. I found that uh, getting into to the volunteering and getting out and meeting people, doing things that I feel are productive, that, that has made all the difference. I think I would have just withered up and, and, and gone to sleep somewhere if I hadn't done that. I'm not big on having all that non-productive time on my hands. The work world was stressful. Retirement, according to some, leaves too much spare time. Striking a balance that works for you is key in putting all of the pieces together. There are five basic aspects of our lives that we, as human beings, need to address. There's the physical. We need to stay active and fit. The social. We need to interact with others. The intellectual. We need to keep our minds active and engaged. There's the emotional. We need to get satisfaction out of life. And of course, there's the spiritual element.
We want our lives to have meaning, be it through meditation, religious worship, or as part of a larger cause like volunteer involvement. I have worked a great deal with churches. I have been preaching part-time since, oh, about seven, eight years ago. And I, I find that it, it, it was a challenge in the beginning, but it, it fulfilled me spiritually because, well, frankly, I wanted a different kind of service than my church was having. I was more into tambourines and contemporary music. And being an Anglican, uh, I didn't find too much of that in my church. And so uh, I just took it upon myself to construct these services. When I watch the joy on other people's faces, it, 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 it's a great thing. I, it's, I, I love to do it. I found uh, when I was working, I didn't have that much time to read. And spiritually speaking, I have found more time to read. I am increasingly interested in the similarities of <laughs> when you look at the problems in the world which sometimes are based at the foot of religion of one kind or another. Uh, so it's wonderful to have the time in retirement to pursue some of those goals.